It is Sunday, August 30th, 2020, and this is your Three Gorges Dam update. We have four pieces of information to cover today, including the Big China disaster that you're missing. Next, courtesy of Seafood Source, flooding in China hurts countries' caviar production. Also, courtesy of Farm Progress, China grain purchases drive prices, create cash flow opportunities. We also have some new photos and some new footage. Let's hop into it. And a brief caveat before today's video. While researching for these reports, I come across information from various sources. Just because I decide to include a piece of information doesn't necessarily mean that I agree with it. I like to let you decide for yourself. Moving on. And a quick look at the water level at the Three Gorges Dam before we get started. The current water level at the Three Gorges Dam is 162.13 meters. That's down from yesterday's 163.19 meters. The current outflow is listed at 34,300 cubic meters per second. That's up from yesterday's 34,000 cubic meters per second. The current inflow is not listed, and it is worth noting that these numbers are released by the CCP. And a couple of quick interesting pieces of information before we get started. China to allocate $14.48 billion for post-disaster recovery. China has ramped up its efforts to prevent heavy floods from hampering the anti-poverty campaign, an official said at an SCIO press conference on Friday. And here's an interesting tweet that I found and translated with the help of Google. On the afternoon of August 28th, Chaotong and Yilan County of Yunnan province were hit by heavy rains. Many roads were heavily flooded. Floods poured down from high places to form a waterfall landscape. The Meteorological Bureau of Yilan County of Yunnan province and the Natural Resources Bureau of Yilan County jointly issued a third level warning of meteorological risk and of geological disasters. And our first article comes courtesy of Bloomberg, the big China disaster that you're missing. The world's largest dam is under pressure in the massive flooding that's wiping away billions of dollars of value in China. The predicament symbolizes a looming crisis for Beijing. Climate change is bringing more frequent and intense deluges that threaten the economic heartland. And infrastructure defenses installed with the disasters of previous eras in mind can't keep up. There's very little time to prepare for what's coming. The problem isn't that China lacks water management projects. It has built hundreds of thousands of levees, dikes, reservoirs, and dams on its seven major river systems. But many are struggling to cope with months of rain-fed flooding that has ravaged vast swaths of industrial and agricultural land and engulfed millions of homes. This past week, officials feared that the Three Gorges Dam on the mighty Yangtze was peaking and could overflow. Elsewhere, authorities have destroyed barriers that were causing more harm than help. China has experienced three of the world's ten most devastating floods since 1950. Yet flooding in cities is getting worse, a sign of rising populations and failure to execute urbanization policies. China's annual average losses from river inundations are the highest in the world. Flood policy hasn't been made the priority it should be given the high stakes. The Yangtze River Economic Belt is home to more than 40% of China's population. That's about 600 million people and accounts for almost 50% of export value and 45% of gross domestic product according to China Water Risk. On its own, the region could be the third largest economy in the world. More severe disasters are anticipated. Hydroclimatologist Peter Gleick, a member of the U.S. National Academy of Sciences, told the South China Morning Post that climate change is increasing the risk of extreme rainfall events. 
making it even more likely that dams like the Three Gorges will be unable to prevent the worst flooding from occurring in the future. And this comes courtesy of SeafoodSource.com. Flooding in China hurts country's caviar production. Recent floods in central China have wreaked havoc upon the country's sturgeon farmers who are now dealing with a wave of escapes that could seriously impact their caviar production. Authorities in China's northwestern province of Gansu, which embraced sturgeon farming in recent years as a new source of economic growth, are warning of ecological chaos as thousands of the valuable fish escaped upstream to lakes in neighboring Sichuan province. The local offices of the Agriculture Ministry in Wen County is working with counterparts in Guangyan City to recapture the fish. While several companies on the Gansu side are offering 84 cents per 500 grams to locals who recapture and return the fish alive. Allowing fishermen back into the river water is problematic as there is currently a 10 year fishing ban imposed for the Yangtze River. The prohibition was introduced with the goal of salvaging badly damaged ecosystems and depleted species, and enforcement of the ban has been backed with a strong government campaign. The effort to recapture the sturgeon risks undermining the ban and causing further damage to the Yangtze biosphere. According to the Sichuan Provincial Office of the Agriculture Ministry, Yet in a statement, the ministry concedes that it is absolutely essential to recapture the sturgeon for the ecological protection of the Yangtze system. China's caviar exports increased five-fold in volume terms between 2013 and 2018, according to China Customs data. Thank you for watching this video. If you're finding it informative, please consider giving the channel a subscribe. And this is courtesy of Farm Progress. China grain purchases drive prices, create cash flow opportunities. The fundamentals driving agricultural markets have shifted in the last two weeks. A recent crop tour identified more drought stress than most anticipated. Dry weather has continued in the western corn belt, but the biggest factor has been demand. Chinese purchases of U.S. corn and soybeans have continued to exceed most trader expectations and have created a dynamic shift from asking when they will start to when they will stop. As of the publishing of this article, which was on August 28th, China has bought 7.143 million metric tons of U.S. corn and 13.2 million metric tons of beans for new crop delivery. According to all the data that we get from the USDA, as well as private sources, China has likely purchased around 8.2 to 9 million metric tons of corn year-to-date from the world. Strangely, we believe they had purchased a total of about 7.2 million metric tons on the day of the last USDA report. Yet USDA left Chinese imports estimate at 7 million metric tons and production at 260 million metric tons, which is unchanged from last year. And I'm going to jump ahead in the article to the part that discusses Chinese crop deficits. Using USDA's numbers, China will have a 17 million metric ton deficit between production and consumption. However, it is logical to think that flooding in the south, droughts in the north, and an armyworm infestation in the northeast have likely reduced the Chinese crop to 250 million metric tons or less. This would create a 27 million metric ton deficit. With most of their reserve stocks drawn out, we are told they are down to the 2018 plus inventory. China could be facing a significant challenge in meeting demand. And our last piece of information is a series of interesting tweets.
And I think that's a good place to wrap up today's video. I hope that you found it informative and check back soon for more content.